This is a table Yupana, an artifact from the Inca Empire. Specifically, this is a replica of the first one discovered, excavated near Cordeleg, Ecuador in 1869. Here's a smaller one which originated in Peru. The typical Yupana is mostly flat with a grid-like arrangement of individual compartments, usually square or rectangular but sometimes weirder shape, and some compartments sit on raised platforms. The Inca people used these objects like an abacus to do computations. Maybe. Or maybe not. The Inca people are known today for their mathematical sophistication, most famously for the quipu, a system of numerical record keeping that writes numbers using knots on chords. Each digit, one through nine, is represented by a different knot, and their position on the chord gives their place value. So the Inca, with no alphabet or written language at all, developed a base 10 positional number system, more or less equivalent to the Hindu Arabic number system. The Inca never did calculations like this, though, because their numbers looked like this. The knots on cord kind of resemble beads on the rods of an abacus, but they're completely immobile. The Inca used the quipu for numerical data storage, like record keeping of agricultural yields or even taxation. So they did need to do somewhat fancy arithmetic computations. And the old stories say that they used a device called the yupana, from the Quechua word yupai, which means count. Now, I want to say up front here, I'm not a real historian or anthropologist. I'm a simple mathematician and Z-list YouTuber. I want to acknowledge some very helpful conversations with Cinzia Florio. So what I say may represent her particular point of view, but I'm not trying to say anything controversial. And if I make any mistakes, it's probably my own fault. Thank you, Cinzia. The best people to tell the story of the Inca would, of course, be the Inca themselves. But the Inca people had no written language and left very few permanent records to document their history. Essentially, all the early information we have was mediated by foreign invaders who were actively destroying the culture as they documented it. And I myself am, more or less, a descendant of those foreign invaders, so I'm going to proceed with caution. But anyway, you ever try to talk to a real academic historian about something? You ask a simple question and they talk to you for an hour just to end up with a boring and ambiguous non-answer. This is frustrating for people just trying to get a straight answer, but I'm here to tell you, Sometimes the boring, confusing, and ambiguous answer is as good as it gets. This ain't calculus class, folks. If you want the truth about a long time ago, you got to get comfortable with ambiguity. Here's the basic story. This is the oversimplified YouTube version. Nowadays, we have several examples of Yupana artifacts. Wooden or stone boards divided into compartments, often having several raised platforms. This one here is the Cordeleg Yupana, which was discovered in 1869. The Cordelag Yupana is pretty big, it's 33 by 27 centimeters, that's about the size of a vinyl record album. Mine here is 3D printed, thanks a lot to Max at the Fairfield University Innovation Annex for helping me print it out. If you're into that kind of thing, click the links down there to download my files and you can print one out yourself. Anyway, they found this thing in Ecuador and there were some old stories about computing instruments that were used in the region. Juan de Velasco, a Jesuit missionary in Quito in the 1700s, he wrote about devices made of wood, stone, or clay with several sections where they put seeds of different size and color. By means of the different combinations of them, they carried out their things and did their accounts. De Velasco is describing a counting board. Counting boards have been independently developed in several different places around the world. It's just some kind of an area divided into regions and you have counters that hold different values based on where they sit. I made another video about the Gerber Abacus, which was a fancy counting board from around the year 1000 in Europe. Similar things were used in China, the Roman Empire, and in pre-Columbian South America. This thing has much more structure than a typical counting board. You got regions of different sizes and shapes, plus the different levels. Who knows exactly how you're supposed to do it, but certainly you can put stuff on there and move it around, right? Okay, so it's all making sense. The people of Quito had a special counting board, and this thing was found in Ecuador, so this thing must be the counting board that Velasco was talking about. And he notes specifically that this is how they did it in Quito, 
different from the rest of the Inca Empire. Quito was a bit of an outskirt, you know, technically part of the empire, but not fully assimilated at the time of the Spanish invasion. And they found this thing in Ecuador, so it all checks out. But things get a bit murky over the following decades. People started finding these weird boards all over the place, not just near Quito, but across the old Inca Empire. Okay, so maybe this thing isn't a special Quito counting board. It must be a, like a more widespread Inca counting board. Sure, why not? But then, in 1908, an old manuscript was found. The Chronicle of Felipe Guaman Poma de Ayala. Guaman Poma was an indigenous Peruvian man writing in 1615. It's a detailed description of the Inca Empire written by an Inca native within a generation of the original Spanish invasion. That's a top-tier primary source. And this thing also includes a description of an Inca counting board and even presents a drawing. An Inca man holding a quipu next to a grid with counters in specific locations. This is the Inca Yupana. But the picture in the chronicle doesn't look like this thing at all. The interesting shaped boxes, the different levels, these are key features of the artifacts which aren't present in the Guaman drawing. The drawing points strongly to the existence of an Inca counting board, but it kind of points away from this thing. Anyway, modern scholars kind of separate the whole thing into two pieces. First, there's the thing in this picture, which is referred to as the Guaman Poma Yupana. And people generally believe that the drawing is representative of an actual counting instrument that really existed, but is lost today. And then there's this thing. There's not much good evidence that it really is a Yupana, but unfortunately the name stuck after all these years. It's usually called the Table Yupana, or the Archaeological Yupana, or something like that. The original quarter leg Yupana was made of wood and has some engravings on the side. Here's a wooden board they found in Chan Chan with the same layout, although it's about half the size. Here's a stone one from Ancash, which is mostly the same, but the pattern in the middle is a bit different. Here's another one from Ancash that looks very different. Here's two others from Karhua. These ones don't have any raised platforms. This one, it's not known exactly where it comes from, but it's held in a museum in Italy now. I just like the way it looks. It's vaguely like the quarter leg one. It's got symmetric raised platforms and the weird shape in the middle. I was hoping to be able to buy a replica somewhere, maybe a museum gift shop, but no luck there. Here's one for sale online they claim is a real one. Costs more than the curda. But why am I even talking about this? I'm a mathematician and my videos are about old computing instruments and this probably isn't a computing instrument at all. But there's something about this thing that's really fascinating to me. It has a feel to it. A structure to it that seems mathematical even if it's not really and I'm not alone here obviously many people have tried to make this into a calculator even though it's probably not you know there's plenty of other things it could be some have suggested that it's some kind of a diagram like an urban or an architectural model my pal Cinzia Floria has observed some connections with common geometric forms in Inca art suggesting that the table Yupana is an artwork with some spiritual or religious meaning some have suggested that the table Yupan is some kind of board game, similar to other compartmented game boards that were produced by other cultures around the world. But the idea that this is a calculator seems to be stuck in the popular mind. You poke around online, you can find YouTube videos, websites, even math textbooks that explain exactly how these weird compartments and platforms supposedly work. But this is all totally conjecture after the fact. These different values don't occur in any primary sources. The primary sources don't describe this object at all. But some people just present this stuff as if we really know how the Inca did it. But hey, what do I know? Like I said, I'm not an expert, and obviously people can teach their culture however they like. I think in the end, for me, paying true respect to the Inca people involves imagining them as real people, not some fantastic kind of stoic math Jedi. They were just people, mostly like me. They didn't exist to be deciphered, to be figured out. They lived their lives. They worked hard, they had fun, they got bored, they fell in love. They were happy, they were sad. Some of them were bad, most of them were good. They made art, they built cities, they did math, they made good food. And they also made these things. I don't know what it is really, but it's beautiful to me. I don't have to decode it, dissect and reconstruct it in order to appreciate it. The people who made these had an appreciation of structure, symmetry, depth, of abstract ideal forms. I assume it meant something specific to them, but it's probably impossible to really know for sure at this point. But still, I love this thing. And can a man really love something that he doesn't understand? Well, of course I can. Probably all the things I love the most are things I don't fully understand. 
you know, there's a mathematical impulse in me that wants to see everything as like an equation to be solved. Sometimes you got to lay that down. There's a deeper impulse, a higher calling, if you will, to see the world and myself in it, not as a puzzle to be deciphered, not as a wilderness to be conquered, but as a mystery to be respected and appreciated on its own terms. The Yupana artifact is a mystery, and without any commentary from its creators, without an instruction manual, all that's left is the object itself. And I love it. Mm -hmm.